Good afternoon. My name is Becca and I am joined by my teammates Tessa, Liz, and Emily, and we are the creators of Plant. Have you ever wanted to enjoy fresh produce grown from your very own garden, but did you find the multitude of gardening resources overwhelming or conflicting? And even with the perfect setup, a garden can easily fall victim to neglect, and at the end of the season, you could end up with a barren plot. Plant aims to bring gardening into the technological age. It guides you in creating a home garden from start to finish. Before signing up with Plant, a user can check out the collection of plants in our database. Our database has a number of vegetables and herbs perfect for a kitchen garden. We used an API that brought data from the farmer's almanac. One of our challenges was converting this data into facts and figures as much of it was prose. We did leave some of the prose intact for the user's benefit and education. And now Tessa's going to take us through plot creation. Thanks, B. Now I'm going to walk you through the plant planning process. First, our user Tom can log in with his case and sensitive email and hash password, upon which you'll notice that his nav bar will get a new plot drop-down menu, and the plants tab has been turned into a drop-down as well. So now he can go to the create a plot page and optionally name it. After entering its dimensions, he's taken to the plant selection view, where depending on his plot size, he may be shown a list of plants that sadly are too large to fit in his garden. He can select the plants he would like to grow that will fit, either by typing them in or selecting them from the autofill drop-down menu. We've limited the selection to 10 distinct types per plot for now. When he's done, he's taken to the sunlight mapping view, where we've temporarily converted his plot from square inches to square half feet. He can toggle each section of his plot to demarcate how sunny or shady it is, and when he's done, he will finally be given his algorithmically determined plant, which Liz will tell you more about now. Thanks, Tessa. So this is Tom's new plot layout. We can see in the top right corner that there are no plants. This is because all the plants that Tom chose require full sun, and yet this part of his plot was shady. We can also see in the plot key that each color on the plot corresponds to a different type of plant. We can also see the number of each type we should be planting. So how is a plot actually created? One of our biggest technical challenges was designing an algorithm that could fill a plot with plants based on their size and the amount of sun they needed. We also wanted to allocate the same amount of physical space to each type of plant, rather than planting the same number of each type. We considered a lot of possibilities and ended up going with a greedy heuristic because it gave a pretty good result while still being fast, and we didn't want to detract from user experience by having plot creation take a long time. And now if we go to the My Plots tab, we can see that Tom's new plot was added to his list of plots. And now Emily will talk about plot maintenance. Thanks, Liz. So you may notice that there's now an alert symbol in the nav bar. This appears when Tom's weather data, which we are collecting via the Open Weather API on a cron scheduler that runs once per day, points to an extended wet or dry period. In this case, Tom's weather is a bit dry, so we're telling them to get out there and water his plants. We also include a short weather blurb, so if it's going to rain later in the day, Tom can save the energy and let nature do it for him. Additionally, we've included Twilio's API, so he'll get text alerts uh, with the weather if he's chosen to include his phone number on sign up. We've also added a calendar, which includes the sowing and the harvest dates of each of his selected plants based on his climate. We've achieved this through the use of two APIs. The first finds his longitude and latitude based on a zip code, and the second uses this geographical data to query his local weather station for his approximate last spring frost date. We then add or subtract days from this date to determine, based on the plant's ideal germination environment, to determine when the seed should be in the ground, and then add days from that date based on the growing season of each plant to determine when Tom should expect to yield the fruits of his harvest. So, thanks for listening. We are Plant, and we're live at www.plant.us. Thank you. <laughs>